So I'm heading out to the property. It's morning. It's uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, Ken called this morning. And there was a hell of a storm that came through just prior to that. He sent me some pictures. The neighbor's fifth wheel uh, completely blew upside down so there must have been like a mini tornado or some hellacious winds that came through there and as we were talking on FaceTime about 15 minutes or so into it um, you know there's a lot of other destruction too like solar panels down at this place I lost one of mine I was really concerned about the big trees that kind of loom over the top of the cabin and luckily that so far hasn't uh big branches hasn't come down but there's a slew of trees down and as we were talking suddenly water started rising uh, <laughs> in his front yard basically in the field and now there's like a mini river flowing through there and it's starting to creep up towards the bottom of his cabin and he can't see my cabin to see how high the water's getting there I know there's about a six, eight foot drop right behind it, and then it goes out towards the creek. There's another six or eight foot drop. So that tells you how high that water is. We had some pretty gnarly rains all night long last night. Um, it's still pouring down. Like I say, it's just 10 after eight now. It's dark enough out here. It looks like it's 8 p.m. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to do anything. Uh, a branch came down on Stephanie's trailer looks like it's not that damaged if, if at all I hope um, the whole road the county roads flooded so I may not even be able to get in there and if there's a lot of down trees you know I don't have my chainsaw with me either to cut some trees out of the way to get in there but anyways I'm gonna try to get out there and just sort of survey what's happening and I want to keep an eye on that water level because if it gets up into my cabin I mean there's nothing I can really do but just pray really um, but I want to be there and see what's going on I'm just too stressed out to sit at home and cross my finger so keep you updated on that Second bridge. Look at this. Unbelievable. Ken's really lucky from the trailer. To his place he had minimal damage but look at these trees back in the background all a bunch of them are snapped off and just everything peeled off of them down over towards my place where a lot of flooding got a solar panel that was ripped off but branches on that trailer could have been a lot worse Pretty crazy. Well, here we are on Richie. I got up to oh, almost up to Pete's, not quite, and there's a massive, massive tree across the road. It's a big boy. There's no way, even if I had a chainsaw, it would take me hours to get through that thing. So Ken's stuck. Ken is stuck. Rain's finally lightened up here. It's 9.13, said we'd be having storms until about 10. 
but I mean, everything's just crazy flooded. These open fields are just like, it's hard to see, but they're like uh, swamps now. I mean, there's water coming off of the sides of the road like crazy. Tipton was going off. The light show from the lightning was nuts earlier, about 10 minutes ago. I think it's going more east than south now, so heading over to the Lake Edwards area. But wow. I'm heading to Dennis's now because I can't get through. I can't get through to our property, so look at this shit. Holy fuck, dude. Anyway, Dennis said his pond's completely overflowed. He's flooding out up on top, even where his pond was. So, and look at this meadow. It's just full of water now. Crazy. I'll touch base with you in a bit. Not no more. I told you it wouldn't take much. <laughs>
straight up. On the side here. This is one of Pete's totes here. How did it get here? Maybe that's one of ours. IBC tote. There's a little turtle. Wonder what the hell's going on. Look at this. The game stuff that was under the cabin that just floated away in the water and what we now have a river back here a little creek used to be our side-by-side -side trail the generator's not even here i don't know where it went it's gone here's all the insulation swept down pallet that was over there you can see how high the water was on the door on the inside 11 inches from the floor wow absolutely crazy um <laughs> who knows where the generator ended up it got swept down in this water when it was it was up to here Absolutely crazy. I wouldn't believe it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. Pete's over there too. He's got a chainsaw. That one tree is Not much left of their greenhouse. Shit, dude. Unbelievable. Well, it's 410, just heading home. Um, yeah, that was a gnarly day. Hey, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, I'm always going to be nervous about that flooding issue. But it uh, looks like Pete got the worst of it. And it's just a lot of cleanup, you know. It could be way worse. So, pushing all the stuff. The whole community 
neighbors and everybody joined together and um, you know helped out on a chainsaw, a pair of hands, a tractor, something. We got all those down trees off the road so that we go all go and kind of check out our cabins or homes. And uh, anyway, it's nothing too terrible. It's just kind of a pain in the ass, you know. Uh, it's going to be a lot of work to get everything cleaned up and put back and all the branches and trees and debris and cut and hauled and uh, burned up. So, uh, like I said, it's, I feel like it's a pretty lucky situation, all things considered, and some of the other people that weren't as fortunate. And uh, there was definitely a tornado that came down went through the trees behind Ken and I's cabins. It just looks like a little private plane just skimmed the trees and, you know, took out a whole line of them. So, I mean, those could have fallen on top of either of our cabin, and it didn't. So, yeah, hey. I guess this weekend is not so much fun and games. It's going to be more chainsaws and rakes. So.